hi there. I've been teaching a very nice lady to play the melodeon for about three and a half years now. And she decided the other week that she wanted to move uh, kind of sideways onto learning the Anglo concertina. Carry on with the melodeon, but um, learn the Anglo at the same time. And I've lent her my GD Anglo concertina. Uh, so this lesson is going to be on the GD. Uh, I may do the, the same lesson for the uh, CG as well. The idea behind this tune is to give um, the lady in question lots of experience of playing uh, quite a few left hand chords. So to that end, uh, this tune has got 10 different chords in it. So as I'm sure you've guessed by now, the lady's name is Kathy. This is Kathy's tune. Um, I think it's going to be a, a, an interesting one to learn. So let's make a start. So this is a GD Anglo concertina. Uh, this middle row here is the uh, G row. Um, you can hear a G major chord there and here. So the middle row is G, the row nearest to the player, nearest to me if you like, is the D row. So you'll hear a D major chord there and there. And the row furthest away from me is the accidental row. Let's have a look at the music and see what uh, we can see. So there's the title at the top, Kathy's Tune, GD Anglo Concertina. Now, the way I write my concertina music out is in two clefs. So I basically have the tune in the treble clef and the bass or the accompaniment, if you like, in the bass clef. And you need to know what the notes are on those clefs. If you don't know, then I suggest you download my music theory sheets, which you can readily find from my website. In fact, at the time of doing this video, I think you can find them on the home page. So section A is what we're going to start with. And that says one crotchet equals uh, 80, uh, as 80 beats per minute. But I would suggest setting your metronome to 128. That will slow it right down. That sounds ridiculous, I know, because that's obviously faster. But we're going to play it kind of double time. Uh, so you can see F sharp at the beginning. So um, you know you're in the key of G major. So there's F sharp in the treble clef and F sharp in the bass clef, notice they're different. I'm sure you already knew that, but if you didn't, check it out on my music theory sheets. Then we've got a repeat sign, thick line, thin line, and two dots, and then we're into the actual tune. So the chords on top, G, D7, G, and C, G, D7, E minor, they're chords that a guitarist or a keyboard player could play behind you, but those are the chords you're gonna be playing with your left hand, uh, and we'll get into the real details of that in a moment. Let's first of all look at the right hand, uh, so that's the treble clef of that first bar. And it's very, very straightforward. I, I've set this out in a very straightforward way to start with, so I shouldn't find this too hard. This is what we have. You can hear the tune climbing. The notes are G, B, A, C, B, D, C, E. So that's all on the right hand of the instrument. So it's button six. Now, I'm not sure how I number my buttons. Uh, this side, I number one to five on each of the rows. And this side, I number six to 10 on each of the rows. Not everyone does it that way, but that's the way I do. So button six is the first button uh, down on this side. And I'm gonna use finger one. You can see the number one by that note. That's G on the push. Okay, and then the button below, still pushing. So button number seven gives me a B. Same button pulled out gives me A. The button below, button eight on the pull gives me C. Back to the B that I've already played. So that's button seven on the push, finger two. And then button eight on the push, uh, finger three gives me the note D. Return to C on the pull, same button. And then the little finger uh, is used on this uh, button here. It's button number nine on the pull, and that's the note E. So it's push, pull, push, pull, like that. And you don't have to yank the bellows around much. It's just a tiny, tiny amount um, will give you the desired effect. Obviously, you have two notes on each button. I'm sure you already knew that. So that's the right hand, that's the tune. Let's have a look at the left hand. By the way, with this tune, you're gonna get lots of uh, help. Let's see what else we've got here. On this sheet, you can see Kathy's Tune, GD, Anglo, Concertina, instructional notes. And on this, there's loads of stuff to help you with the chords. Um, some real sort of specifics there, especially about that D7 chord. And then you've got the list of chords and you've got instructions and hints for quite a few of the bars. But I'll, I'll cover that in the tutorial anyway. And also you're going to get these uh, sheets, which are 
uh, diagrams of all the chords used in the tune. And there's uh, three on one, three on another, three on another, and one on another. So it's four sheets. This one's got G major. And this, in fact, is the, the first chord we're going to play. So I'll just show you how this works. So G major is on the push, and the notes played are G, G, and B. So G, octave G, and a B. So the little finger is on button number one on the G row, so that's the middle row, pushing. Little finger, that's your um, if you like. And your par is done like this. Uh, finger two, button three. And finger one, button four. That's the octave G and the B. So normally with a major chord, you'd have um, the first, third, and the fifth. You'd have G, B, and D. But here we've got G, G, and B. We've only got two notes of our, out of our major chord. But that's perfectly acceptable. So you've got G and then G and B together. And the G and B together is your par. So um, par. Okay, um, while I'm dealing with this sheet, let's just scroll down a bit. So there's D7. And in fact, D7, you just press exactly the same buttons, but pull out. That gives you a D, an A, and a C. Now, what you've actually got there is the first, the root, or the tonic, the D. But then you've got A, which is the fifth, and you've got C, which is the... Um, flattened seventh and I go into the real details about the seventh chord uh, on, on the instructional notes I won't do that now but if you're interested in why that's D7 and why we've got a C note in that have a look at that so D is your um and A and C is your par so G major and D7 same buttons and a bit low down this page uh, you'll see a C major chord and you can see this one has got the little finger on the accidental row, okay, button number one, that's your um, that's your C note. And like the G, you've got an octave C here, uh, button four on the G row, and you've got an E on button five on the G row. So it's all on the pull. So you've got G major, D7, and you've got C um, major, okay? And I think the chart is fairly self-explanatory. This is for a 30 button uh, Anglo concertina. Obviously, we do get 20 button uh, Anglo concertinas. You won't be able to play this tune on that. And you get a 40 button, you get more buttons. Obviously, you will be able to play that. But bearing in mind, a 40 button will have more buttons uh, here and here. Uh, so just be aware of that. Okay? So you get all these charts as well. And um, it should really help you. Let's just go back to our sheet music, shall we? The first bar, left hand, you've got the G, and then you've got the uh, G and the B together. So if you look at the bass clef, okay, that's the first thing you do as you play your, see? All played at exactly the same time. And then you do the D7, which I've already shown you, that's the D. And this is how the G and the D on the same button really jumps up, doesn't it? So this is the D, an A and a C, and then you play that with the, the A and the C with the right hand. So the first half of the bar, all quavers, which is one and two and, okay? And then the second half of the bar, you do the G chord again, the um and the pa, look at this and look at the beginning of the bar, you see it's the same. So that's with the B, D with the right hand. And then at the end of the bar, you've got your C major chord. Notice the C has got a, a normal headed note, but it's got a strike through. That tells you on my music that the note is found on the accidental row. As this tune is in the key of G, notes on the G row will have normal heads. Notes on the accidental row will have uh, normal heads with strike throughs. And notes on the uh, D row will have diamond heads. We haven't come across those, but we will do in the fullness of time. So there you've got C down there, and then you've got C and E. That's the last pair of notes in the bass clef there. Uh, that's your C major chord, and that goes with your C and E with the right hand. So left and right hand go together. They're very straightforward. And make sure you feed your left hand through your strap enough that you can reach that first button um, of the accidental row. Make sure you've got that button there on the accidental row. Some accidental rows don't have 
a full complement and if you're missing that note you won't be able to play that a bass C uh, root note for that C major chord let's just play that uh, first bar again okay here we go okay now let's look at the second bar and we've got a little run down and notice the last note there was played on the left hand okay let's just play the first four notes so we've got the D the B on the push A on the pull F sharp also on the pull so we've done the D and the B and the A before D is button 8 on the push B is button 7 on the push A is button 7 on the pull and F sharp is button 6 on the pull okay finger 1 so it's finger 3 2 2 1 but notice the next note has got a normal head but it's got a strike through because it's on the left hand side now sometimes notes go too low to be played on the right hand side and the only way we can find them is on the left hand side which confuses the issue a little bit if you're used to melodium playing where you've got distinct left and right um, tune and bass so here this note this note of E is found on the accidental row and it's button four and it's finger one okay and it says LH above that just to remind you that's the left hand so then that's just a quaver and you've got a quaver rest and a crotchet rest so it's uh, a bit of a gap at the end there so you count it one and two and three and four now you only play that E for a quaver only hold it for a quaver because um, you're going to just fill that gap in with the bass let's look at the left hand there the bass clef for that bar you've got your G bass and G chords you've got your umpa G to D7 like you started bar one and then we've got a, a different chord now this chord is E minor now let's look at that chord uh, the E note the root note there is uh, button number four on the accidental row hence the strike through finger three and the notes uh, G and B you found those in the G chord but instead of having a G bass you've got an E bass so you've got E G B that's root position now what you've got to do here because the tune is on this side as you play that E with the first finger you've got to play the upper E the octave which you remember is on button number four on the push at the same time you then bring finger one over okay to the note B which is button four on the G row so you do this that's why you can only hold that E uh, that note there for half a beat because you need to bring your finger over so that bar sounds like this and it says LH only, left hand only in red letters there because the second half of that bar is all done on the left hand side. There's nothing on the right hand side. So let's put those first two bars together. Bar three is very similar to bar one, but we've got a little dotted quaver, semi-quaver. So instead of going, we do this. Now there, you can hear it's the same notes that we played in bar one, but on beat two, we've got a, a, a dotty quaver and then a semi-quaver. So instead of going at equal values, we do a long and a short. Like that. So you'll notice that the, the A coincides with that D bass. You then do the par of the D7 chord, and then you just uh, put that C with the right hand in just after that chord. So one and two and a three and four, and other than that, it's the same as, as uh, bar one. I did it that way just to make it a little bit more interesting to listen to. Okay, now we have ending number one. So we've got two endings. This is ending number one. And this is pretty straightforward. 
you've done this before D B A F sharp then you're going to play G G B A now so D B that's button 8 button 7 on the push A button 7 on the pull F sharp button 6 on the pull and then play the same button uh, but push to get G G again at the end of the bar you're going to play B A there's a little dagger underneath the A telling you to just to hang on to the button you don't need to repress it so G B A and the A is obviously on the pull so that is timing wise one and two and three four and a because you've got those two semiquavers you know they're semiquavers because there's uh, two lines on top two beams if you like and the bass there is G bass D7 and then two lots of G oh, um, pa, um, pa. now so I haven't put the fingering in uh, in that bar on the bass on bar 4 because you know you've done it all before you know that the G is finger 4 fingers 2 and 1 likewise the D7 ok and um, every time you do the C chord that's finger four and fingers two and one the e minor in the previous table is finger three and fingers two and one so it's the same all the way through so you can see a repeat sign there so let's view the whole of that first section and play it all so we're going to play the first four bars so ending number one here we go pull the bellows out to start pretty straightforward I think make sure you have all your documents printed out I and mean, I'm using my computer here uh, but it's much easier to read this off the, the printed sheet so at that point you're going to repeat from the uh, uh, repeat sizes you're going to do bar one bar two bar three and the second time through you're going to jump to bar five and play that instead of uh, bar number four let's just deal with bar five which is obviously very similar to bar four and not so busy so you've got D B A F sharp and you've got G and G again so you've got a crotchet G and then a quaver G and then there's a quaver rest that's just to help you get onto the next bit give you a little bit of um, uh, of a gap so you've got time to get your fingers sorted out and the bass there G bass D7 and then G and then just a single G so they've got uh, G G and B together D A and C together so that's G to D7 then you've got G G and B together and then just a single G so let's put that together nice and short on that you've got two G's two octaves apart like that right let's zoom out and see the whole of the A part use the air button there but if you find or if you feel like the, the bellows are closing up give that uh, air button on the right hand side a little squirt with the side of your thumb as you pull out um, so that you get some more air into your bellows for those push notes okay it's an integral part of the playing and you you use it as you play the note and if, if you do use it as you play a note make sure you you pull or you push whichever direction you're in a bit harder so you don't lose the compression you don't have a dip in the volume so that's the a section let's move on to the b so it's a little bit harder this with the right hand in bar six you've got this 
So it's, that's quite straightforward in itself. You have um, this A minor chord behind it, but you're going to play this on the right hand. E, C, A, C, D, B, G. So essentially you're playing an A minor chord and a G chord uh, in separate notes. So E is button 9 on the pull, finger 4. C is button 8, uh, finger 3 on the pull. And A is button 7 on the pull, finger 2. So you just play uh, E, C, A, C. And then you press the same button but push in to get the D. So button 8 and button 7 pushed in will give you B. And button 6 pushed in will give you the G. And the timing is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Now, you can see the chords are A minor and G number 2. So G number 2 is a G chord, G major chord, just like the first G chord was. But this is a slightly more conventional chord. Let's deal with the A minor first of all. You've got this. Dead straight, uh, first, third and fifth. So you've got A. Uh, it's button 3, finger 3. And then you've got C and E notes. Uh, buttons 4 and 5, fingers 2 and 1. There's your classic A minor chord, A, and then C and E together. So, um, pa, um, pa. That's on the pull. Push, play the same buttons. And that's your G number 2. Uh, the first G chord was this rather unusual G, G octave, and a B. This is G, a B and D. So, very, very straightforward. So, G2 is just a, another G major chord. So A minor, the M means minor, of course. And then G major. As you play. Very, very straightforward. Now this bar is probably the hardest bar we've dealt with so far. Here you'll find out whether you've pushed your hand uh, through the straps enough. But let's deal with the right hand first of all. And we've got this. Okay, this is the right hand side to start with. We've got C and A. That's uh, buttons 8 and 7 on the pull. Finger 3, finger 2. And then you've got this note F natural. Now, all the Fs are sharpened in, in this because we're in G major, but we want F natural here because the chord we're playing behind this is an F major chord. So you can see that the F has got a natural sign by it and it's found on the left hand side and it's button number five on the accidental row, hence the little strike through. Finger one. Okay, so you've got... So right hand, right hand, left hand, then back to the uh, right hand uh, for the A again, and then just push the same button in and hold it for two beats. There's a round open note with the stem. It's a minim, so that's the note B. So that gives you... Like that. One and two and three... Four. Let's look at the left hand. F major chord looks like this. Now F major is little finger, accidental row, uh, button number two. This is pulling. That's the F. You see it's an F natural. That's your root note. It's your um, if you like. It's there. And then the par is those two buttons. Buttons uh, three and four on the pull. Uh, finger three, finger two. Uh, and the notes are A and C. So you've got F bass and then A and C together. So when you put that together, you've got that, and then you play this. You play octave Fs. Now, where it says LH only, that's on the second beat of the bar, third pair of quavers, you've got F as the bass and F as the tune. So the, those two Fs are an octave part, see? And then you return to the A with the right hand and the uh, A and C. So you can see it says same. It's got two arrows showing you those uh, two sections of the bar exactly the same. The and count of one and the and count of two are the same. So put that together. Like that. That's the first half of the bar. Quite tricky, isn't it? Like that. And then when you hold that minim... B down on the push, you play a different chord behind it, the chord is E major. Now, it's the same button that you played for the F uh, major chord for the um, so it's on the accidental row, it's button two, but it's on the push, 
and the note is E, third space up on the bass clef is E, and then you've got a classic first, third and fifth here, so you've got um, you've got the note G sharp on the uh, accidental row, uh, which is button three on the push, that's finger three, and button two is on the note B, which is, uh, you've played before, which is button four on the G row, so a cross row there. So you go from that to that. Let's just play those first two bars of the B section, shall we? Now, it says same button on that B. Look at the last pair of notes in the bass. You've got G sharp and you've got B. Notice the, the second G sharp there doesn't need a sharp bite because it's already been sharpened earlier in the bar. Okay, it's the rule of the accidental. So you've got those two buttons being pressed. And in particular, look at finger two. It's on this note of B. Now, you need that button again in the next one, bar eight, but it's on the pull because you want the note C as part of your um, A minor chord. So I put the same button with an asterisk and an arrow on those uh, two notes just to remind you don't have to change the the, uh, the finger there because you're going to again do your and again I do my little trick there instead of just going I do the dotted quaver semi quaver trick. Other than that, it's exactly the same as bar six. Bar nine is pretty much the same as bar seven. Except this time you just go, you keep it short. That's to help you get the next bit in. Originally I had it going just the same. I had it going. But in doing that, it makes it really hard to get to the next bit. So I'm buying you a little bit of time there. So let's play those four bars of the B part. Here we go. doesn't take long to play it but it takes a lot of time to learn it and understand it doesn't it so the timing there one and two and three and four one and two and three four one and two a three and four one and two and three okay and you can see some rests at the end of bar nine just to remind you to there's a gap and you've got time to get to the next section Right, so the next section is the C section, and this is going to sound familiar because you've done this before. In fact, uh, to remind you, 10 and 11 is the same as 1 and 2, so that's handy, isn't it? So if we look at 10 and 11, already done this, let's just play this through for you. Already done that, so we're into bar 12 now. So the brief I set myself, uh, when writing this tune was to try and get as many chords in as I can so some more chords coming up here or one particular chord coming up uh, let's have a look at bar 12 it's a little bit different although you're, it sounds familiar to start with right so let's look at the right hand there G B A C B D E 1 and 2 and a 3 and 4 and I'll cut that short, that last note, again, to give you a chance to get to the next bit. So you've got G and B on the push, button six and seven. A, same button pulled out, gives you A. Button below pulled out, gives you C. And then pushing again, uh, button number seven, B, button eight on the push, D. And then button nine on the pull is E. So very straightforward, that. Uh, the left hand there, you've got the G bass, D7 bass, G bass, C bass. You've done all those basses before. Let's play those two hands together. Now, I've made that E a quaver to give you time to get over to the first note of bar 13. Notice that uh, in that par for the C chord, 
that is a, a C and an E, okay, buttons uh, four and five on the G row, okay, uh, fingers two and one. The finger two is on this note C. In the next bar, you play the same button push in to give you the bass note B, which you need for your B chord, your new chord. Now this is quite a strange chord, the B chord. Let's have a look at our diagram for this, shall we? And you'll see that it is uh, button number four, like we said, on the G row. Push that in, that's your B root note, and your par involves the other two rows. So you've got D sharp here, which is button number five, accidental row, finger one, and you've got F sharp, which is on the D row, button four. So you play the row in the middle, and then the two outside rows. So B, and then D sharp and F sharp together. That's your B major chord. Uh, it comprises B, D sharp, and F sharp. Go back to our sheet music. So we're talking about bar 13. Um, what we have here, We have the note um, F sharp, which is in this case on the D row, hence the diamond head. Let's get that cursor out of the way. So it's it's button number seven on the D row, finger two on the push. Okay, so the right hand, remember. And then you're going to move your positioning down. We're going to use the first finger on button number seven on the G row. And then we're going to use our second finger on button eight, pulling out to get the C. And then we return to the B on the push. So finger two, finger one, finger two, finger one. And then finger three is going to go onto button nine on the push to get this note of G, which is sitting on top of the stave there. So you have... Uh, and again, I've cut that short, so you've got time to get to the next change. Because we had that note there, that C on the pull, we have to um, alter our bass a little bit here. So instead of going, we actually go, we do um, pa, pa. You can see there's this quaver rest here. Okay, watch out for that. Um, so, like that. And when you play the G, this note here, you're going to do an E minor chord, but before you did this fingering, you did this time you're going to do different fingering because I think it makes it easier. So it's the same notes, it's E and it's G and B together. So you've got E, remember, on the accidental row, finger four and G and B on the G row. So you're going to do um, pa, um and cut it short. Let's put it together for you. Okay, do it slowly. Let's play those two bars, 12 and 13, fairly slowly. Like that. <laughs> Takes a bit of doing, doesn't it, as you'll find out when you're practicing, but it's going to give you loads of fantastic practice at changing chords, changing rows. Um, so, going to be really useful. Right, let's scroll down to the next page. Bar 14. Now, that's the right hand. The first note is the note A. It's on the accidental row because it's got a normal head with a strike through. It's actually button 10. And we're going to use finger 3. And we're going to jump over to the D row, finger 1. This is on the pull. And have the note G. And then we're going to go to the uh, G row. Button 10, that will give you the note F sharp. And then button 9 will give you the note E. So it's finger 3, 1, 3, 2, all on the pull. Like that. Now that button you played there, which was button 9, you're going to play the same button but with a different finger, S, B, D, F. You're going to use your little finger, you're going to push, and you're literally going to go, come down through the notes, uh, up geographically, G, D, B, G in buttons nine, eight, seven, six, all on the push. Fingers four, three, two, one. So you've got eight quavers in a row, very straightforward timing. Now, you'll notice above the beginning of bar 14, a new chord, the chord A. And this is a funny old thing. 
and this is how we do it it's kind of back to front so the um is G row button three it is on the pull finger one because your other two notes your par notes are on the uh, D row and they are on buttons uh, two and three so button two finger three that's the note C sharp and the E is on button three and that's uh, finger two you just play this E minor chord and you gotta turn it right round from that to that that takes quite a bit of practice uh, as you run down to your A uh, A riff there so you're crossing over the rows there with your right hand as you're doing that A chord but this bit couldn't be more straightforward, could it? Running down as you play your normal G bass, and then you've got your D7. So you've done that before, very straightforward. F sharp, A, C, F sharp. We're back in normal position now. And now we're going to play this. We've done this before, all on the left hand side. It's the E minor chord with that E tune, octave E and cut it short so so that is so let's play those two bars 14 and 15 okay here we go get ready now having played um, that final F sharp on the right hand side you don't have to worry about the right hand anymore in that bar. So you can then get your third finger positioned ready on this note of A, which you remember is button 10 on the accidental road to do your... That again, because bar uh, 16 is the same as bar 14. Okay. Um, the tricky thing there, of course, you're going to go from that E minor chord this time, by the way, at the end of bar 15, you use normal fingering. You don't use that different fingering. I don't think it's necessary. So you do that, and then you've got to turn it around to get that A major chord, ready to go with a... This is the same as before. But this time, the second half of bar 17 is different to the second half of bar 15. They start the same. That's the same, but this time you go uh, G, G, B, A, and a little dagger there to take you back in. So let's uh, zoom out and play the whole of the C section. the uh, A section go all the way through if you don't want to go through it twice you can end um, where it says fine so like I said you can go um, in again or you can go or you could go the G with the right hand and play the full G chord with the left hand so your ending would be like that so there's a couple of tricky bits in this I won't lie uh, it's going to take a lot of practice but you're going to learn so much from doing it and there's after all there's no uh, no time limit you can take all the time you need um, so uh, I hope you enjoy learning this particularly Kathy I hope you enjoy learning this and you learn a lot from it and look at those uh, uh, instructional notes because there's lo loads of stuff in there that's going to help you and of course you've got your diagrams of the chords so let's see if we can play the whole thing through for you now <laughs>